Kind of sucks now, right? Aspect ratio is one of the most important parts of photography and nobody ever talks about it. It's kind of boring, but even if you're in your first day of shooting, aspect ratio is something you th should be thinking about. It's more important to photographers now than it has ever been. Aspect ratio is the ratio of the width to the height of the picture. And back in the old days, maybe you had a 35 millimeter camera and you dropped it off at the film off at the CVS and you just got four by six prints. No worry about cropping at all. But then maybe you start to actually shoot some portraits and somebody wants an eight by 10 and this is what you had to do. You then had to shave an inch off of the short edges. And first time you took a group shot, well, first time I took a group shot, that meant I was cutting half of somebody's face off because I was so used to trying to fill the frame all the time. It was just a huge mistake. I wasn't thinking about the final aspect ratio of my images and it screwed me up. And then you know what? I got into YouTube and I need to put my pictures into videos. And videos now have a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which means I'm now cutting the top and bottom of the images off like this. And if I don't think about it ahead of time, then maybe I don't have any pictures that I can show in my video. So now when I'm taking pictures, I try to fill the frame in my 35 millimeter format in case I wanna make a four by six. But then I think to myself, oh, I need to recompose it in case I need to shave the edges off for an eight by 10. Oh, but I also need to factor in that I need to shave the top and bottom off if I want to do a 16 by nine. But we're not done yet. The iPhones now, or any phone. I wanted to make a wallpaper the other day, and not only did I need to find a good vertical shot, but I needed it narrower than 16 by nine. And that required a completely different composition. And most of my favorite pictures that I'd want to put on there didn't work with it. So now if I want to take a picture and be able to use it in different places, I need to be thinking about square, short and fat, long and narrow. And there's something else. The world's most popular format for sharing your photography is Instagram. And you know what the right way to share pictures on Instagram is? Square, fixed, one-to-one. -one. You know why? Because you can put up different types of pictures in Instagram now, but all your thumbnails are going to show up as square. And if you're trying to be popular on a hashtag, people are gonna be judging your pictures based on a square thumbnail. So I still try to shoot my Instagram pictures in square. And I just showed you that eagle picture. I didn't share that picture on Instagram. You know why? Because it wouldn't have worked square. I picked a completely different picture for the square Instagram format. So what does this mean? It means that every time you're taking a picture, try to fill the frame with your camera, the camera's natural aspect ratio but also think about other aspect ratios that you might wanna shoot and imagine how you're going to have to crop the image. Imagine that you need to crop it down to square or to an eight by 10 aspect ratio. Imagine maybe in the future you wanna put it into a video. You also need to think about future formats that might come up because right now Instagram is the most popular format for sharing your pictures and thus square is really popular. But you know how people hold their smartphones? Like this. So in the future, we're probably gonna be sharing more pictures in a vertical format. Are you prepared for the coming future where pictures are all in vertical format? I know I'm not. This is my actual portfolio and what it looks like on my phone. Yeah, my first picture is a wide panorama and I've been shooting wide like this forever because I've been shooting mostly either for prints like those on the wall behind me or for display on computer screens, which were four by three and then 16 by nine, but wide, wide, wide. Everything is going to shift and I might still actually want to show these pictures, but notice everything is horizontal. So I need to start shooting my portfolio differently. And then what happens after the phone? Maybe we'll strap on VR headsets and we'll want everything to be wide and panoramic again. If you have a picture that you want to last into the future, shoot it in as many aspect ratios as possible. Where does this come from? Well, back in the day, portrait photographers shot with four by five film, which translated to an eight by 10 aspect ratio perfectly without requiring any cropping. How convenient for them, right? Hence the popularity of the eight by 10 format. But nowadays the most popular format for sensors is 35 millimeter, which is like a four by six or eight by 12 aspect ratio. So all of us shooting in 35 millimeter format have to think about cropping because our forefathers shooting before by four, five film made the eight by 10 the standard. Unless you have a micro four thirds camera, which is natively at that same four by five aspect ratio, it all gets pretty complex. And what if you're doing professional photography or commercial photography, or you hope to, then you start to get to deal with things like 
magazines and all the things that the editors want. Commercials, advertisements, they require lots of different aspect ratios and you might not know precisely what the designer is going to use. Like look at this ad. That's somebody's photo and it's a circle. <laughs> if you were going to be selling a stock photo, you'd have to think about if the designer decided to use it as a circle. But then there's a picture right here that's in more of an 8 by 10 aspect ratio. That works perfectly. But what? Go forward a couple of pages and we have this wide horizontal spread. So how would you take the picture? Would you take it horizontally? Would you take it vertically? Would you leave a little bit of room to crop? All of the above, right? If there's an important moment and you aren't sure what the final aspect ratio is going to be, shoot all the different ways. Some cameras have this built in, the ability to change the aspect ratio. They might blank it out in the viewfinder or on the back screen. Other cameras don't, and you might just have to imagine it. If you know that you have to shoot square for an important project, you could take a piece of tape, put it right over the screen in the back. Okay, one more thing. Why does a sensor have to be this one format of rectangle? It, it doesn't have to be. It could be a rectangle like that, and then it could have a square overlaid on it. In fact, it could be vertical too. It could be circular and just capture the entire image circle and allow you to, to crop later so that no matter what ratio you decided to go to, you weren't losing a lot of megapixels. As people are choosing more and more different form factors, it's gonna get more and more important for photographers to be able to shoot in a wide variety of aspect ratios. Hope this was helpful. If you like this, the science of photography, the art of photography is a new video training series we have with over 10 hours of video. If you order it quickly after seeing this video, you can get a gift package with two signed prints. Check it out on our store. Thanks.